The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis, from the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19147. Folks, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin. That was our first request today. As you can see, we went down to that 9200 level, held like a rock, and now we've taken off to the upside. We're at 10,500, looking like we're getting ready to move a little bit higher. Uh, Steve Mannion, the old dude that used to be with Trump, his advisor, was on this morning here in Tucson from Oracle, Arizona, over there at the Ritz-Carlton at, uh, believe it or not, 4 o'clock in the morning, and he was talking about Bitcoin and how much he loved it. So maybe that it was already at 10,500. So he had nothing to do with that. So let's uh, just keep an eye on it. Don't trade it. Still watching it. So that's all we're looking at. Folks, I want to explain to you the problem that I'm having here at TFNN from a personal standpoint. I love doing this show. I really like the uh... <laughs> thanks a lot, Peter. Thanks a lot, Peter. You just ruined my day, but that's okay. I deserve that. Um, uh, we'll get into that thing with the uh, with the bonds in just a minute. But the the timing of the morning is really difficult for me because you know the the early morning is the most active, and those are the things that are very very important. Now, if you remember yesterday, I got a little bit flustered because uh, the market was going wacko at a certain time, and we were getting ready to to see it go up and stuff and let me let me just explain to you you know what what I was looking at here I'm going to post my artificial intelligence program from yesterday I'll do it with the the S&P and the Nasdaq and you can see that nine o'clock in the morning there how it took off and I'm I'm on the show from nine to ten I can't really do anything by the time I was able to do anything the thing was a thousand dollars higher and I didn't chase it I, I was able to get short up there because it looked like it was getting ready you know to roll over which is in fact it did and if we took a look at the uh, Nasdaq you'd be able to see that it also was uh, you know a spot on um, uh, fit also but the thing was in the in the S&P the actual high yesterday in the S&P and I know someone in the room probably posted it was at uh, uh, 3015 and that, or no, I think a 3013, and that was the exact 78% swing from that whole move up. So that's why that was, uh, you know, so very, very important. So it's during those times when it's really crazy, like it is this morning, it it makes it difficult. Uh, for me to uh, focus and uh, try to do everything because I have a hard time walking and chewing gum sometimes. So that's it. What I've got to do is I've got to be able to manage the, you know, the talking and looking and all that stuff because I, uh, you know, it's it's this is the most important time of the day. So that's it. Now, hold on just a second. The beeper is going off. That's either good or bad. I don't know which it is. Right now, it's good. There we go. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. Hold on one second here. Yeah. There's what we wanted to see. Hold on, boys and girls. Let's get the old uh, – I can't tell you what I'm doing because I don't want you people uh, coattailing me or anything like that because that's not a smart thing to do. But uh, we'll keep a close eye on it anyway no matter what and uh, keep looking at what's going on here uh, to some of these things. Bear with me a second. I've got to put an order in here now, folks, because I'm at a spot where I need to do something and I have to hit the old – Hit the old uh, button, and we will sell one here, and bada-bing, bada-boom, and uh, we are filled. So we'll see what happens with this as we move through the old uh, rest of the morning here and take a quick look at it. The overall market is still quite bearish, folks, but uh, the $64 question is, are we going to go straight down from here? Uh, I don't know if it's going to be straight down from here, but we've, we've broken some major support in here, folks. Uh, if you remember, the thing that we were focusing everything on this uh, – move was in the NASDAQ and the S&P. If we looked at this, uh, and this is where we were Sunday night, and um, 
So we're looking at the market. See, we're already below that uh, those that 618 and 78 percent trend line because we got all the way down to 7740, uh, uh, 7720 this morning, which uh, was a you know, that was a 786 off of the July low. We did that in four days, folks. So that's not a that's not a very bullish sign. That means 7880 would be uh, resistance. And if we also you remember we were watching. They three drive to a top pattern in the S&P, and that was the same thing that we were seeing here uh, where we had three 1.618 ratios uh, there on uh, Sunday night, uh, actually Friday night, Friday as of the close, and of course it was Sunday night also. That's why we said if this was not any, if it was good, it would not open uh, it would it would not be strong on Sunday, and and it just happened not to be. Now let's get to Pedro, in Park City, the old uh, skiing capital of the world. Let's take a look here, so uh, he can get the old uh, bandwagon going here. Here's what we were doing last night, folks. In the old, uh, with all this stuff going on, this is the uh, this is the ten year note. It's a four hour. You can see we completed. And actually, the high last night, folks, was one. 29.03, uh, 03 or 05, and uh, that was a, uh, a 1.27 expansion, just a tiny bit above the 1.27 expansion. Also, an ABCD over the last six weeks. I believe that there's going to be this should be a top today in the uh, in the in the in the the market for the. Uh, uh, for Treasury notes and bonds, that's what it looks like. So whether that's going to be the case or not, you know, we'll have to wait and see. So we'll do one thing at a time as we walk through here. Now, something something else really happened dramatically yesterday, folks, and it it's it, it's worthy of uh, our attention here. Let me get this up here so we can take a quick look at it. Uh, this is the order that we were looking at yesterday. Uh, we were uh, will it, we wanted to buy the corn down there at that 408 level. The problem is uh, when Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump did his tweeting, uh, it was right during that time when the corn was uh, opening and it gapped down and uh, quickly, you know, lost six cents, you know, three hundred dollars, you know, very, very quickly. But every single commodity, and this is one of the things that we were talking with Ruby about yesterday, uh, in here, is the fact that these things just really just fell totally, uh, you know, totally out of bed. Let's just look at them one at a time, so you can see uh, the impact of this tariff thing that was going on. You'll notice that uh, the wheat went below the 61 percent retracement. Uh, we'll do the next one here which was the I wanted to show you the one that this is the one that we were looking at with Ruby and this is why it was so very very important you'll notice that it gapped below the 78 percent level on the opening and uh, that's a really bad sign folks I mean uh, you, you, you could have bought it there but boy you have to be out of it right away because that really makes it uh, difficult when you gap like that so Everything was happening in the in the, the 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 markets last night with those currency with the uh, grains because uh, well they they were just all set up perfectly but an announcement came out and just uh, nullified the whole thing so whether that's right or not I don't know but I'm looking at the amount of money that I have to risk let's look at one other one here that I think is important then we have to pay a few bills let's take a look at the beans. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking to Mr. Z from Philly. John, how are you doing? Good morning, Larry. Good morning to you, my I, uh, friend. What can I help I'm you with? Wager, or vice uh, versa, what can you help me with? <laughs> I'm sorry. Good morning. Uh, having a bit of a delay here. Um, Larry, I, uh, I confess I'm going to guess uh, I was up and trading more hours than you last night. But um, John, that's uh, impossible but I, uh, because I, I haven't that been to bed. Thing, so that's, uh, <laughs> that's my guess for today. <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. Uh, Larry, uh, you were just speaking of Deese Corn and November beans. Yes. Um, I'm looking right there with you. Uh, as you rightly point out, given these declines off those highs back from oh, June 20th, um, the risk on buys right in this area is quite low on both. What I wanted to do was share with you three factors that I can envision unfolding in the next six, seven trading days that would uh, be the factors propelling prices higher from here. So here they are. Uh, one, there is a USDA report Monday, August 12th. And because of the uh, very late planting on account of very wet spring this year, uh, the acres planted is a huge uncertainty and everybody's guessing and lots of people are saying they've got the numbers fact of the matter is it's uncertain my uh, my guess would be heading into that report from these low prices uh, at a minimum you'd likely get some short covering that's number one number two uh, speculators who bought that rally late you know the lows came may 13th the top june 20th or thereabouts most of the uh uh the speculators getting along that market didn't get long until after it gapped higher i think that was i think the day after memorial day so speculators you know bought it high and have suffered uh and were part of the selling pressure of the past couple of days so speculators having dumped their positions to some extent now leaves room for that same crowd to come back in. 
And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, with this very late planted crop in corn and beans. And mind you, it's, you know, the crops aren't horrible all over the country, but there are pockets that uh, are really late. And the weather forecast looking the next 14 calendar days uh, while, uh, while forecasts certainly can be wrong and don't actualize, um, there is uh, what I call a, a growing threat of too much dryness uh, at a time when the crop really needs ideal conditions, given that it got a very late start. So those are my three factors. That's why I joined you on the buy side, on the long side last night when Globex reopened, and I just uh, hope that's of help to you and your listeners. It sure does, John. The, the chart that I posted uh, right before uh, we started talking was the uh, December soybean meal chart because it is an absolute perfect technical picture. You have a perfect ABCD where the AB leg is equal to the CD leg in both price and time. The number of days down in the AB leg equal the number of days down in the CD leg. It also stops exactly at a 78.6% retracement. So if you can't buy soybean meal here, you can't buy it anywhere. <laughs> so it's uh, it's going to be an interesting one to watch to see how to see how it unfolds. So that's one of the things that uh, looks really good from a technical standpoint. I mean, it it just you know you can't make this stuff up. How does it do this? You know, to to be so perfect, I don't know because the risk here now is, is just a couple of dollars uh, a ton, and something that you know trades uh, quite a bit with a margin of around four thousand dollars. You know, that's a very very low risk, three hundred dollars. You know, in something that has so much volatility, because as most of the folks know that listen to TFNN, the soybeans, uh, eighty percent of the bean is the meal. So that's the key that we're watching here. Uh, today is that soybean meal, but those tariffs certainly uh, certainly shook up those grain markets yesterday, especially the wheat market. I mean, they just they took they took wheat to the wheat shed. That's for sure. You know, that's uh, that's what really happened there. So I I still think the wheat looks uh, okay longer term, but right now it's uh, it's a little bit testy. That's for sure. Say, so Larry, I I do have to uh, reiterate for your benefit and once again that of your listeners. Um, I, uh, I am eternally grateful uh, to you for teaching me back in that 0508 time period the importance and utility of using the FIB 786 and 127 uh, levels. And uh, yesterday, uh, of course, I, I was short Wednesday, thankfully, on the uh, S&P Futures uh, and gave a little bit of those gains back as it started to come back up. But when that 3014 uh, SEPT E-mini futures hit, an exact 786, uh, literally, Larry, to the point, to the quarter of the points, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I saw that, monitored it, didn't short it right at 14, but close to it, of course, having no idea the president was going to come out and, and shock. Uh, shock things, but boy, oh boy, having having um, having those figures and being able to uh, uh, assess and monitor price vis-a-vis -vis that in real time can lead to some uh, terrific low-risk uh, setups. You know, be it right or wrong, you know, it's uh, it's just a beautiful thing. So, uh, thanks very much. Well, it's uh, you know, the 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 trouble that you have, John, is it's sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Yesterday was absolutely perfect, but uh, you know, other days, you know, you don't quite get that. But you know, sometimes you get a pretty good, uh, you know, pretty good idea of what's going. On. It's that first hour of the day that is uh, so very very important in so many of these things. You know, the thing we call uh, amateur hour because. Uh, you know, these are where people are you know, trying to position themselves for the day, and it gets really, really crazy. But uh, we, we had some really big moves, and it uh, turned out to be uh, turned out to be really good. So that's what you're that's what you're waiting to see. So that's it. As a matter of fact, since we're talking about that, I'd like to show you what happened here 
uh, in the uh, European market with the S&P last night. You can see that we were making a high there around 3 o'clock in the morning New York time. And then we came all the way down to that uh, finally making a low around that 29 uh, 34 uh, uh, level. So it was following relatively nicely. But uh, like we say, not all the time. But it, it, and, and there's something there, John. I'm just trying to work with uh, John Jameson, trying to get it automated. And, uh, and, and it, that's what we're really basically trying to do. So those are just a, a few of the things that we're, that we're working on here. Some pretty exciting stuff, that's for sure. Hey, thanks for Excellent. joining us, buddy. We'll talk to, to you again soon. talk with you on one of your shows. So thanks again, Larry. You bet. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And one of the things that I wanted to mention to you is the importance of this E-mini S&P on a four-hour chart. If we take a look at this, folks, You'll notice here, this goes back to late June when we made that bottom down there at 29.15. You can see we went up and we made a three drive to a top pattern uh, here on the 25th of July. Uh, it was actually about as perfect as you can get. It's a perfect ABCD. The AB leg equals a CD leg. Uh, we made a slightly higher high 
there on the 26th of July. And then, of course, that was the Friday night, and then the, the market has started down. You can see that the ABCD structure takes you to 29.39. We went a little bit below that, but the fact that we did go below it is relatively important, but it was in the early morning of the opening price. So that's when, you know, you get these discrepancies. So that the low that we made so far this morning is very, very important because we go below that, there's trouble in River City without any trouble at all. So pay Play very, very close attention to that because uh, it is a very important. It's a beautiful ABCD, and uh, the market's uh, it's hard to tell whether it's overbought or oversold because it's uh, it's overbought in the morning yesterday and then oversold at night. So it jumps around uh, quite a bit. It, and, and I know you're wondering about uh, those four fears that Mark talked about, the fear of being wrong, the fear of losing money, the fear of missing out, what was the, other one? the fear of leaving money on the table. All of those are related. You know, to your mindset, and all of them are crazy, folks, because the fear of being wrong, you're always going to be wrong. I mean, not always, but you're going to be wrong a lot. You're going to lose. The fear of losing money, you're going to lose. No one wins all the time. Missing out, the only way you're not going to miss out is if you're in every single trade, and that's impossible. And leaving money on the table, the only person that doesn't leave money on the table is God, and she doesn't trade every day. So, uh, you know, believe me, there's a few people to get the high and low tick for the day, but that's pretty much what you're looking at. Um, Marshall's asking the question, do I think that the AI will be better with the FIB patterns and things? This is one of the things that we're looking at because we watch the patterns and the FIB ratio so very, very closely. But the AI is basically a timing indicator, folks. Uh, the, the way that I ran into this was way back in 1991. My friend, uh, Dr. Steve Shapiro, was uh, uh, ran into this dude over in Bakersfield, California. This is when they were using these little thermal sheets and Dennis sent him a uh, picture of what the S&P was going to do uh, the next day so uh, Steve drove up the hill and uh, showed me this thing and it looked really great and the bottom that he was forecasting was exactly when a Gartley pattern was completing in the S&P and so I bought it this is when the S&P was trading you know uh, $500 a point not $50 a point I had three of them on and the market uh, rallied uh, about six points, which was uh, you know a nice piece of change, about three thousand bucks, and uh, had about two hours to go. And uh, you know my quota is such and such, and so I booked the profit on that. And I had Dennis's phone number, and I called him up, and I said, "Gee, that was a great forecast. Uh, thank you very much." I said I booked a nice profit, and he started yelling and cussing at me with words that I had never heard before, and I thought I'd heard them all. And I said, "Whoa, dude!" I said, "I don't need to be talked to like this," and I hung up on him. And uh, a few days later, uh, Steve came up the hill and said he wants you to look at this one. So I, I did. I said, "Steve, I don't want to. I don't want to deal with anybody that's that." Uh, mean and he said well give him another chance and so we started chatting back and forth but uh, the reason why he got mad at me he said look it's going to go up for two more or two more hours which it did it went up the last two hours more than it did the whole early part of the day so that's how I got interested in it uh, I spent a great deal of money with him over a couple years uh, he passed away Oh, about 18 months later, leaving us, you know, no way to nowhere to go. We had to reconstruct everything, you know, build our own uh, own program and stuff, which took a long, long time to do. I've been working on it ever since. But, you know, with the new computers and stuff, it uh, makes it a little bit easier because what used to take us four or five hours to do, we can do in five minutes. So those are just some of the things. I run it on about, oh, eight or nine different, well, about 10 different things. I run it on corn and beans and... And the, you, I'm running on a, a natural gas now, and the actual uh, for natural gas looks pretty good. And folks, we got a bottom coming in natural gas. Uh, we we had a big run up yesterday, stopped right exactly at the 61% retracement of the previous day's high, and then just totally fell out of bed, dropped uh, well over $2,500 going down, making new lows. And that's perfect coming into a weekend because you can come in Monday and really look at it fresh because it's got a it's going to have a really nice pattern completing in here. I Unless we, you know, totally fall out of bed here in natural gas and get below the 195 level, then I would say, uh-oh, there's something problem problematic here. But right now, that's what we're uh, that's what we're paying attention to as we look at these uh, 
this this morning. So those are just a few things. Give me one second here. I want to review what's going on with the market here. Ah, we're having a nice run in gold. That That's not unexpected. And, uh, okay, the, oh, selling off in stocks again, doing the same thing. So all of that is uh, lining up pretty much uh, like uh, we, we are going to go lower in stocks, folks. It's just a question of, of when, and uh, that's it. So the, the natural gas, we're, right now we're trading at 211. The low has been, I believe, 209. Yeah, 208 and a half. As long as we don't get below 208 and a half, and we can stay there all day, we've got a pretty good chance of uh, making it, uh, you know, to that spot. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to just look at that uh, one thing at a time as we as we go through and uh, look at some of these things. So those are the main things uh, regarding the the Treasury bonds, folks. Uh, we had a big move. I I posted that chart earlier uh, in the. Uh, in the uh, Treasury notes, I wanted to get this up because there's a huge difference in the notes and the bonds, folks. Let me let me explain to you. You can see the July high that we made here in the notes. You see that? That went about uh, $500 higher in this last run that we made last night. It went $500 higher. The Treasury bonds went $4,000 higher. That is just huge. And I don't know if it's related to uh, zero interest rates. All I know is that's a big, big difference. So you need to pay very, very close attention to that. That's something that uh, needs to be uh, – you know, needs to be taken care of for sure. That's uh, really what you're, you, what you really need to be watching as you as you look at that. So, pay uh, pay close attention to that the euro has is is trying to make a bottom. The uh, British pound is trying to make a bottom, and the Japanese yen, of course, they're all trying to hold. And it's all related to that euro that we've talked about. I'm going to talk about it again because it's that important. We'll get down here, and you'll be able to see the importance of that support and we'll be able to see it very very clearly down there at that one uh that 1.618 number came in at 11040 and that so far has been the low i believe the low was 11032 so that's and the fact we were able to rally 100 pips is uh, pretty good considering no, nobody wanted to buy it so those are just a few of the ones that we're keeping a very close eye on uh, this morning here. Now, we've got to pay a few bills here, I think, pretty quickly. And we get back, I want to uh, go over a couple of futures. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, self 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, we're going to take a look here at a couple of these futures that I think are inter interesting. That the Treasury, um, excuse me, the December soybean meal chart, folks, definitely deserves your attention if you trade the grains. I don't know what it's doing this morning. It was acting a little better earlier, but gosh, this this has got uh, uh, everything that you could possibly ask for with that perfect A, B, C, D. Now, I didn't draw uh, the A, B leg and the C, D leg in time, but if you'll if you'll take the time and effort. To look at the high that we made there in June that came down to B, we rallied up to C, uh, and then came down to D, that's that's perfect, A, B, C, D. In other words, the number of days down between A, B is equal to the number of days down in C, D, and as you can see, it stops right at the 78% level there at uh, $300 a ton, and if you look at it closely, of course, you can see the big A, B, C, D pattern that ended in May. And that's, you know, led to a pretty strong rally. And this is the uh, first major ABCD pattern in this. And, of course, this is what Gartley talked about in his book on page 222. Uh, he spent two full pages describing this pattern because he thought it was so important. Uh, you buy the first ABCD correction in a bull market. You sell the first ABCD correction in a bear market. That's really what you, what you really want to uh, take a look at. So... Pay, uh, pay close attention to that. It's going to be very, very interesting. The uh, This has been a pretty big down week uh, for stocks. It's, of course, it's still starting to, you know, to be a little early, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see if this is a uh, – uh, well, we don't know where the market's going to close, but it looks like it's going to close lower than we were last Sunday. So we'll we'll wait, review this as we go through uh, the weekend, you know, preparing our charts, you know, and everything for the uh, newsletter and the 24-7 service that uh, we do here at uh, TFNN. So those are just a few of the things that we're keeping a close eye on here this morning. And uh, we'll be watching them very, very closely. Uh, the bonds have held this uh Level of uh, 58, 59. We're rallying back. We're making a 61% retracement now in the bonds. This is going to be interesting to see if it can pop above that level. Uh, so those are just uh, another one that is is very interesting too to uh, see how the market uh, uh, over you know how it how it handles it. So though you know someone just asked the question you know how many things do i follow i follow about five or six things but when i when i prepare the trades i only see four or five things that look really really good and those are the ones that uh that keep my interest and uh you know the, the, those are the ones that uh, seem to you know to pay the bills you know those uh, when you find the patterns that line up you know that's what you're that's what you're looking for. I let me just double check here. I just want to see what the meal is doing here this morning because it had such a perfect pattern. Probably might even not be doing well. I don't know. Let's double check. 
Uh, actually, it's up about a dollar. So it's uh, right in the ballpark of uh, that $300 a ton level, acting pretty much like what it's supposed to be doing. But, you know, whether it's going to continue that or not, you know, we don't really know. But nobody else does either. What we're focusing on is the risk. And the risk here on this is about $2. If we get below 299 a ton, then there's something wrong. But remember, this thing is in the midst of a uh, growing season that has been anything but perfect. And now we have an ABCD and the, the December corn. I mean, if it hadn't been for those uh, tariffs yesterday, I would have thought December corn would have been the buy of the century. But uh, it was, but not in our time zone. There is the problem because, you know, the, uh, the, the corn just didn't do it. And we're, we're still trading at that same level now where we would have been buying 407, but the market went all the way down to 397. That's $500 more than what we wanted to risk and so what we're doing here is we're watching you know to see what happens to it here over the next uh day or two and we'll re-evaluate re it you know on monday because if if that tariff was only a one-day aberration of uh president trump tweeting then you're looking at something you know totally uh totally different um, we're near the lows of the day now in the E-mini S&P and also the NASDAQ. We've had some pretty big swings. We rallied about 50 points in the NASDAQ and then, uh, you know, sold off somewhat. So we're uh, looking like uh, whether it's going to be strong training the rest of the day uh, is anybody's guess. But we need to, uh, you know, pay close attention to it because if it closes lower, it's really going to be a reversal week. And that will not be pretty on the charts and there's very little support, folks. Uh, if you just look at the long-term picture on this, uh, once we went below 78.80 in that NASDAQ that we talked about, it that really was telling you that uh, there's really big trouble. And uh, we're way below that now. We're 77 and change. So those are just a few of the things that we're you know, keeping a, a close eye on. And th this could be a really big move to the downside in stocks, folks, because nobody's expecting it. And I, when I mean nobody, I mean very, very few people are, uh, you know, pretty much uh, the same thing. Yes, Mr. Bill, uh, they, Powell and Trump, uh, they do their arguing in the news. So uh, that's what the reporters go by. And so they pick up the, the what you call it, the uh, ideas and post them up and whatever it means, anything. I don't know. That's why I don't follow the politics. And that's why I'm a technician. I brought, I love this chart. This is from Rich Anderson, and it shows the difference. Oh, boy, this is what I like to see. Hold on one second here, folks. I've got to uh, – okay, just a second here. Uh, uh, just give me a second. There we go. Get this little puppy up here so we can see the difference between technicals and fundamentals. You know, the technical persons, uh, you know, during this time period that they're looking at here, it doesn't show what it is, but it shows that technical analysis does – uh, outperform fundamental analysis uh, because the, the you know the markets do follow the news and uh, you know it's always the most bullish at the top and always the most bearish at the bottom. That's the that's the fundamental thing that you have to look at when you're when you're looking at some of these things. So pay close attention to it because it's going to be interesting to see how uh, how it unfolds as we go through and uh, look at some of these. Uh, it would not be surprising to see the market make lower lows here this morning and then close stronger on the day. That's uh, always a possibility when you're dealing in markets that are very, very jumpy. We went from 25.35 in the S&P up to 25.62 in a matter of about 30 minutes, and then bada-bing, bada-boom, what are you doing now? You're making new lows. And there's more selling coming in. So we'll see. The open interest is increasing uh, in the S&P, but not increasing by very much. The open interest in the bonds did not increase on this big run-up. It was about the same. There was no big increase, which tells you that most probably there's something wrong here with the uh, uh, you know, the, with the overall buying in that. But, you know, who knows? But, you know. <laughs> this has had one heck of a week. That's all we can say. It's uh, very, very interesting here, you know, to look at, uh, at these things as they uh, as they unfold. So keep an eye on that December meal. That looks like a really uh, – that's just a perfect setup. You just can't make that stuff up to see it absolutely 
Yeah. Uh, I don't, Bill, I don't know what those, what those uh, numbers mean on this chart for fundamental technical analysis. Basically, what Rich Anderson pointed out to me was the fact that the fundamentalists uh, don't do as well as the technicians, which doesn't surprise me because it, when you're looking at the bar chart, if prices are going up, there are more buyers. If prices are going down, there are more sellers. That's what you need to know. So that's what we're paying attention to this morning. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the crude oil uh, where we made that beautiful Gartley up there on we did this on Sunday night to show you that that 58.30, 58.50 level was so important. We went all the way down to to break below 5,400. We've now rallied back a couple of dollars off that bottom. But one of the worst uh, down moves of the past year or so in crude oil uh, happened yesterday with the market dropping better than 4.5%. We're snapping back better than 2.5% today. Uh, but, uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, but it's, at least it's getting very, very volatile, and that's what we're waiting to see happen in many of these markets. I've always said that the volatility in these markets is going to increase dramatically, especially starting now. We just come off of Mercury going retrograde and that new moon that we had on August the 1st, and so we'll watch the uh, 
the outlying as we go through next week. We're going to have some pretty good astro stuff. Uh, Norm Winsky will be on, I believe, on the 6th or the – no, I think he's going to be on the 9th of August. I hope to have uh, Bill Meridian on t- next week along with uh, uh, Stan Harley to give us an idea of what they're looking at. And then the following week we'll have Rich Anderson and Arch Crawford uh, as our guests. So those are a few of the guests that we're looking at. So that's the main thing. Let me just bring to you, this is the most important chart of all. This is the C-mini S&P because uh, we went below, uh, we, we got below the 2940 level. Very, very important. Trading around the 2940 level right now. Very important that we close strong today in stocks. Otherwise, it's going to be looking at a the first move uh, of a down move. It's going to last uh, probably the whole month of August. And we say that because looking at the Bradley model, uh, which we talk about quite a bit, and I'll be talking about it in the newsletter this week, is showing that we're going to be down all through August. And not every day, but it was high bias to the downside. And then also the fact that we'll be looking at a uh, 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 a move into early September. I think September 7th is the next Bradley date. We had one on the August 1st, and now we're, we're heading down. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.